called Carbon Bagger here, coming to you live from the north. More specifically, Cleveland, Ohio, and even more specifically than that, I am in front of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and this pyramid right here houses the official Rock and Roll Hall of Fame where they induct rock and roll musicians as well as other musicians from some other genres here in Cleveland. You can see it says long live rock right out here in front of the pyramid. Now, I've actually been here, but it has been a very long time. Uh, very, very early in the days of this channel, I filmed a tiny little video here at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but I figured it was time. It was time to revisit rock and roll and truly immerse ourselves in the history of the great art form known as rock and roll. So please, follow me. Now for years I've been confused on why the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was in Cleveland, Ohio, but this uh, historical marker, it clears up that fact and explains how Cleveland, Ohio is indeed the birthplace of rock and roll. It talks about a, uh, a local disc jockey, Alan Freed, who in 1921 through 1965 played uh, music and he, he would play up-tempo black rhythm and blues records and he would call them rock and roll so the term rock and roll was actually coined by a disc jockey here in cleveland i'll oh, check this out we got this really cool cadillac limousine just pulled up in front i'm not sure uh not sure who that belongs to yeah very interesting architecture here this uh pyramid shaped building out in front of Lake Erie. Again, long live rock, it declares out in front. So without further ado, let's head inside the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I guess we enter right here. There we go. So here we are inside the lobby of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I notice that these hanging cars here, it's very shimmery disco ball-esque car here. See some others dangling there. That one's got various lights protruding. This has something written on it that I can't quite read from down here. Also dangling in the lobby is this right here. It looks like it'd be a giant hot dog. Although it's got like exhaust pipes in the back. I don't know if this is some sort of hot dog mobile, some sort of hot dog rocket car possibly. All right, so apparently we're supposed to start on level zero, which is down this, uh, down Scalator here. So we watch that giant hot dog float past us. So yeah, looking at this hot dog from below, you can see it does have headlights. Would add exhaust pipes in the back, headlights in the front. So I'm thinking it is some sort of hot dog based vehicle. This car here belongs to one LL Cool J. So don't call it a comeback. This is uh, LL Cool J's car. Here by the restrooms, the women's room has Madonna standing next to some toilets. And here we have a group of uh, musicians standing on a toilet. All right, so I will do my best here. I am not any expert in rock and roll or music in general, but I do enjoy music. And uh, if, if I get something wrong, feel free to give me a correction in the comment section. But I'm here, I'm here to learn. So I'll leave here knowing more about rock and roll than I did when I arrived. All right, and here we are heading in to the exhibits. It says, for those about to rock, we salute you. This exhibit here is called, It's Been Said All Along, Voices of Rage, Hope, and Empowerment. So an exhibit on uh, social justice in music. Over here, we have the original lyrics to Fight the Power by Public Enemy, written by Chuck D. 
And then over here we have Chuck D's hat, as well as this medallion that he would wear around his neck. Down here is a bandana worn by Tupac Shakur. That's pretty amazing there. And this is a vest worn by Isaac Hayes. He's a singer, musician, also played chef on South Park until he had a falling out with the creators over his religion of Scientology. Also has his saxophone down here. And this is Bob Marley's hat. That is pretty amazing. This, uh, this wool hat here, this would contain the famous and infamous dreadlocks of Bob Marley. Those iconic dreadlocks that are in a billion posters in a billion dorm rooms were all contained within this wool cap. Some amazing uh, stage outfits here. This costume here is amazing. This is uh, worn by Bootsy Collins of Parliament Funkadelic. Just look at that. Got those snakeskin boots. Wow. Here's Tom Morello's shirt. This is actually a Boy Scouts of America shirt worn by Tom Morello in uh, the Rage Against the Machine video, Gorilla Radio. This here is uh, one of the jackets from NWA. They have that classic song about uh, the police. Check these out down here. This is a suit worn by Ray Charles. This is a dress worn by Aretha Franklin. And this jumpsuit here was worn by none other than James Brown. So look how, look how, how, how that neckline plunges. And here it talks about the early influences of rock and roll music. Of course, Robert Johnson famously sold his soul to the devil at the crossroads in Clarksdale, Mississippi in order to create the art form known as the blues, which would play a major part in the creation of what we know today as rock and roll. You can see all the widely different styles of music that converge to create rock and roll. Of course, starting over there with the blues musicians, you see the, the gospel and soul singers, bluegrass musicians like Bill Monroe, folk artists like Woody Guthrie, all contributed to making rock and roll what it is today. Looking into the roots of rock and roll, here it talks about rhythm and blues and the various artists. It's the Johnny Otis guitar up there, and then there's Bo Diddley's guitar, very, very famous uh, blues musician. And that there is pretty wild. There are Ray Charles sunglasses. The sunglasses are obviously very iconic because of his lack of sight. He would wear the sunglasses constantly. Another ingredient into rock and roll, we look at the gospel case here. You have the, uh, the poster here says, Reverend C.L. Franklin and his daughter, Aretha Franklin. And here we have the blues, all these different blues guitars here played by the various blues artists. This guitar is T-Bone Walker's guitar. We have Howlin' Wolf's money case. It says that Howlin' Wolf did not trust Banks at all. So every dollar he had, he kept in this, in this suitcase and he would actually bring it onto stage with him to make sure that it was safe while he was performing. In the country folk and bluegrass section, we have this awesome Hank Williams Sr. suit, that awesome pinstriped western suit there. And this suit and hat belonged to Bill Monroe, one of the most famous bluegrass musicians of all time. So, so integral to bluegrass, Bill Monroe literally named the genre bluegrass because he was from Kentucky. Don't Knock the Rock, Protests Against Rock and Roll. Exhibit here showing the people that stood in the way, the old shrivs that stood in the way of rock and roll. You can see the preacher preaching against rock and roll there. We have a, a record burning party. This kid is happily tossing a Beatles album onto a pile of flames. Ah, oh, I mean, these people are a lot of fun. Over here we have a exhibit on Mr. Elvis Presley, who was a big deal when it came to rock and roll. Here's some 1950s era Elvis Presley t-shirts. 
there. It says different, there's different Elvis songs written on those records. These are some of the earliest concert tees. And there's a very fringy jacket owned by one Elvis Presley. Here's Elvis's cowboy hat for whenever he wanted to go into cowboy mode. Here is a double-necked guitar owned by Elvis. See him in the picture there holding it. Never understood, and I don't know how to play guitar, but it always seemed like it would be difficult for a guitar to have two necks because after all, you only have two hands. If nothing, Elvis sure did have a lot of style and panache to him. See by this ultra glittery golden suit. Playing a video here about Elvis. Right in front, there is Elvis's custom motorcycle. It's like a tricycle style. It's like it seats two people. Now Elvis loved collecting like special vehicles and whatnot. He had a wide collection of golf carts that he would drive around Graceland property in. But this is pretty cool. Very unique. And this is something I had no idea about. These are the digital artworks of Jerry Garcia from The Grateful Dead. Apparently, uh, Jerry Garcia, despite dying in 1995, was an early creator of digital artwork using computers of the time. Here is an uh, Apple Macintosh computer. So this is the style that uh, Jerry Garcia would use to create his uh, digital artwork on. Yeah, here's some of the artwork of Jerry Garcia. This may seem primitive by today's standards, but actually this would have been super cool back in the early 90s. Yeah, really fascinating. Something I absolutely did not know about Jerry Garcia. Oh, this one's actually animated here. You can see the changing scene. You know, not surprisingly, he does incorporate psychedelic elements into his art. Each one of these cases talks about a different city and the different studios in the city in the early stages of rock and roll. This talks about Sun Studios in Memphis. Of course, famously the home of Elvis Presley. You can see some Elvis Presley stuff right there. Some uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, You've got the Jerry Lee Lewis jacket, and Carl Perkins. Now, Carl Perkins may not be as well known as some of the others, but the owner of Sun Studios, I know this because it's, uh, they have a drive-by trucker song about it, the owner of Sun Studios told these artists that the first one to sell a million copies, he'd give them a Cadillac. It wasn't Elvis, it wasn't Jerry Lee Lewis, it was Carl Perkins who sold it when he, uh, wrote Blue Suede Shoes, so he was actually the one that wrote one of the most famous Elvis songs. Some of Roy Orbison's things. You have his iconic sunglasses there. Also has a very interesting guitar. He has like this white leather studded guitar. And here we have Detroit, called themselves Hitsville USA. They had the Motown records, very distinct sound there. Some of the outfits from the various artists here in this case. This guitar here actually belonged to Jermaine Jackson of the Jackson 5. And then we have Rick James' bass. Down here we have some Chuck Berry stuff. We have the Chuck Berry's. Down here we have the uh, Chuck Berry's guitar. Chuck Berry, of course, one of the very early rock and roll guitar players and kind of Contribute a lot to the uh, stage presence of rock and roll. Over here we have Chuck Berry's guitar. Uh, Chuck Berry, one of the early rock and roll singers and guitar players, would actually do a lot of different uh, dancing and movements on stage that would kind of form the pageantry of rock and roll. Did the famous chicken walk with the guitar replicated in the movie Back to the Future. And then later in life, he did some horrible, horrible, non-rock and roll related things. Here we have Richie Valens, guitar and shirt. And then this flashy jacket belonged to Fats Domino. This is the London slash Liverpool case. Of course, we have uh, the Beatles. The Beatles, there's Ringo Starr's jacket, a trademark weird looking gray jacket there, some other British bands as well, the Yardbirds, Herman's Hermits. Now this is the San Francisco case right here. Talked about some of the counterculture music coming out of San Francisco. 
Down here we have some of the scarves belonging to one Janis Joplin. Also a pair of eyeglasses that also belong to Janice. This is a jacket and some shoes belonging to Jorma Kokemen of Jefferson Airplane, which would later become Jefferson Starship and sing the classic, We Built This City on Rock and Roll. Now we head into Los Angeles, where we have uh, Neil Young's jacket right there. There's one of Stevie Nicks classic flowy dresses. This duffel bag here is completely filled with hotel keys, the old hotel fobs and keys. It says these were collected by Timothy Schmidt of the Eagles. He just as he was touring, he wanted to see how many hotel keys he could not return and keep them as a, as a collection. It's actually a massive amount of different hotel keys there. Some of these key fobs are massive. I guess they're built really big so people don't steal them. But apparently, uh, when the Eagles come along, they don't care. This case here talks about London-New York-Los Angeles in the era of 1975 to 1980. There we have a Patti Smith cult hero doll. Stayed action figure. It says cult figure on the t-shirt. This is a sweatshirt owned by Christine of Blondie. See it has these these jewels all attached to it. These items here belong to Jerry Only of the Misfits. It's a crazy vest and mask right there. And then this guitar here, very, very interesting shape to it. And up at the top, it's got a Cyclops skull on the neck. Some items from the Ramones, Joey Ramones jacket, Dee Dee Ramones guitar right there. And then over here we have some uh, Sex Pistols items. Ironically, the Sex Pistols refused to be inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But you know, I guess that's kind of kind of their thing, being you know against the man and all. Here is the heavy metal section. You can see the double neck guitar, the uh, guitar shaped like. Actually, this is a bass here from. Uh, Van Halen is actually shaped like a bottle of Jack Daniels. There is Angus Young of ACDC's outfit. He always dressed like a schoolboy for some reason. I don't know the whole story behind it, but I know he would dress in the shorts and the schoolboy outfit. This jacket here worn by Bruce Dickinson of Iron Maiden. You know what? I don't know that much about metal music. I don't listen to that much metal music. But you got to appreciate some of the style and pageantry that goes into this. This bizarre jacket here. This jacket here by Rob Halford. He actually, it's really interesting, you know about Rob Halford and his contribution to metal and metal style. He would often wear um, clothing reminiscent of uh, alternative uh, gay subcultures and then other uh, metal musicians unknowingly took, uh, took the style on as their own. This is Dimebag Daryl of uh, Pantera's guitar. And this guitar here, really cool, has the, the crazy mouth on it. This was from uh, the bass from Megadeth. Here we look at Seattle, 1979 to 1995. I would call that kind of the, uh, the grunge era, I think that's like the, correct, the correct term. Maybe, maybe, maybe some people that know more about music know a better term for it. We have Chris Cornell of Soundgarden's guitar. And then this guitar here has been smashed to pieces by Mike McCready of Pearl Jam uh, back in the day. You know, it was very stylish. Smash your guitar when you were done playing. Unfortunately, you would have to get a new guitar for every show. This is Alice in Chains Claymation Dolls. Said these were used to create a music video called I Stay Away. Yeah, with those little members of Alice in Chains in claymation form. And I guess some of these bands are so big that they require their own section. Here is the Rolling Stones section. There is Mick Jagger's very dapper suit there. Other outfits from the Rolling Stones, including Keith Richards' jacket. Now, Keith Richards, Keith Richards, as of the recording of this video, Keith Richards is alive. And, and Keith Richards, I think, redefines on the, 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 just the idea 
of staying alive and life itself. This is a man that people thought was going to die in the 80s and has somehow not changed his lifestyle in any way but continues to live. A, a very symbol of life itself is Keith Richards. And clearly one of the largest and most famous rock and roll bands of all time. One of the first major superstars in the medium of playing instruments and singing. We have the Beatles. There's some more of those weird gray suits. We saw Ringo's in one of the other uh, displays earlier. That is uh, some of the other iconic gray suits that they wore. This is an electric guitar played by John Lennon in 1964. That shows right there, it actually has a set list from the 1960s still taped to the guitar. We have some Ringo Starr drumsticks there. And this is John Lennon's electric guitar organ. So this was an experimental instrument that he used. I guess it's half electric guitar, half organ. There's John Lennon's passport and green card. And then, oh, this is pretty cool over here. They have uh, John Lennon's iconic wire rim glasses right there. This was Paul McCartney's piano. So they had this in the basement of his girlfriend's house that he lived. And so that a lot of the famous Beatles songs were written on this very piano with him and uh, John Lennon. I don't necessarily know all these bands, but I do appreciate their style. We have the OJs here and the Shirley's. And oh, here's one I do know. This is REM, that flashy purple suit there. Some items from Green Day, the black button up shirt and the guitars. And then it looks like this is a drum with a little robot drawn on it. There's the Prince case here. Some clothing by Prince his doily gloves there and this teeny tiny little vest. Okay, and this is pretty amazing. This is back when Prince changed his name to the symbol. They mailed out this uh, floppy disk that uh, would allow the newspapers and press to print the symbol. I guess they had difficulty because that was not an actual letter. So they sent out the software here that would allow the uh, news companies to actually print the symbol that was his name. And there we have some Elton John clothing, some amazing, this big amazing purple coat. Look at that. This crazy red, white, and blue hat. You can't deny the man hat style. This is Sly and the Family Stone and Billy Joel's leather bomber jacket there. Here's ZZ Top's guitars there. And look at their drums. Not only did they have long beards on their face, they had long beards on their drums. Those are some fuzzy, fuzzy drums. And there is the guitars. And there is the guitar and bass from ZZ Top. They actually look more metal than anything in the metal section. Look at that, they had, yeah, they had style, didn't they? Bruce Springsteen suit there. It's another Bruce Springsteen jacket. And one of Springsteen's guitars. You can see how worn it is and scratched up it is from being played. Some guitars there from Def Leppard, one of Joe Dirt's favorite bands. This is Depeche Mode. Like the guitar there, it looks like a pentagram of some sort. You can see Michael Jackson's jacket there along as one of his iconic suits yeah very iconic you know definitely more controversial these days than he was when I was growing up but look at this artifact right here that is the uh, bejeweled glove that Michael Jackson was known for so he would wear this glove when he performed Billy Jean on uh, in concert yeah, back in the 80s and 90s, when you thought of Michael Jackson, when you thought of pop music, you thought of this glove, this sparkling glove, they're rotating at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame here in Cleveland, Ohio. 
You can see the Alice Cooper section here, that amazing skull face that he has on the back of his jacket. Look at the cod piece on that one. So it's this really cool white top hat there, but possibly most impressive, <laughs> this electric chair that he would apparently use in his stage shows to execute himself. The David Bowie section here of this uh, jacket that he would wear on stage meant to look like the British flag. And then we have a mock-up of one of his, uh, one of his, the sets for one of his stage shows. And uh, you can see it's very elaborate. It's got these towering buildings with different colored ooze coming out of them. You can see little tiny uh, David Bowie performing right there at the bottom. We have Blondie. Not only is that outfits worn by the band Blondie, but a wig worn by Deborah Harry. Always interesting, and growing up I always thought Deborah Harry's name was Blondie, but the band itself is named Blondie. That's Deborah Harry, her name's not Blondie, but she is blonde. That might have been the part that was confusing. And there's the Allman Brothers with their uh, organ right there. They play that really good song, you know, the one that has no words. Now even though this is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, there is a section on the story of hip hop here. And here is the original lyrics to Rapture, written by Deborah Harry and Chris Stein of Blondie. Uh, that was actually one of the, the first rap songs to have any sort of uh, mainstream attention to it. It says that this jersey belongs to Crazy Bones of Bone Thugs and Harmony. We have a necklace worn by De La Soul. And then these are House of Pain rings. Uh, growing up, my, my favorite rap song was Jump Around by House of Pain. We had a cassette in my car, and you could actually flip it at the right moment. You could play uh, Jump Around, and you hit the flip button, it would play the Jump Around remix on the other side. And you could literally flip it back and forth and listen to nothing but Jump Around, which we did until one of my friends pulled it out and threw it out the window. That right there is one of Flavor Flav's clocks. One of the most iconic uh, symbols of 80s hip hop, the clock around Flavor Flav's neck. This big fluffy coat and big fluffy hat belong to Busta Rhymes, a great rapper. Why do we never hear about Busta Rhymes anymore? Whatever happened to Busta Rhymes? Also, this is uh, Wyclef Jean's uh, harmonicas from the uh, Fugees. Some very iconic pieces of rap history here. Slick Rick's hat and eye patch, as well as DMC's eyeglass frames from Run DMC, as well as his tennis shoes and the iconic Run DMC hats there. And then Grandmaster Flash's mixer and cap. There's Jay-Z's hockey jersey, as well as some signed sneakers by Jay-Z. It's right here in the same uh, case as Snoop Dogg's Long Beach shirt and his shoes. There's DMX's jersey. Unfortunately, I think we did lose him a few years back. The Jimi Hendrix section here. Not surprisingly, a big collection of very fancy guitars. This is the Light Bus. It's a bus owned by an artist, Bob Hieronymus. It says that actually this was at Woodstock Festival. A large group of people slept in this during Woodstock. And it says that you can actually see this bus during Jimi Hendrix's performance at Woodstock. It's the Janis Joplin section. Some of her outfits and musical instruments. And then these God's eyes that said Janis Joplin liked to weave. Here in the doors section, got this sitar here in the middle. And possibly most interesting is Jim Morrison's Cub Scout outfit from when he was a kid. The right here, right now section. You can see different, uh, I guess these are contemporary bands. This is Tiger Army, Seether, there's Billy Eilish's yellow outfit, St. Vincent, and Lauren Grace. Oh, it says gender is over. It's a bodysuit belonging to Taylor Swift. Here is the Lady Gaga. Here is a Lady Gaga outfit. 
Oh, she's pretty famous for her crazy outfits. It's like a typewriter dress. You can see the typewriter keys coming out of her shoulder and her hat there, the different words all over her dress. I'm trying to remember, I saw the meat, dr the meat dress is out there. I think it's in Seattle, maybe at Mopop? I don't know, I have to look into that. Here we have uh, Harry Styles, fuzzy, uh, fuzzy suit. Only, only song I've heard of his is when he sings that song about being a dog on SNL. <laughs> and then uh, we have Beyonce's very pointy, shiny golden outfit there. And then this belongs to The Weeknd. Here is some, uh, there's the handwritten lyrics to Chandelier by Sia. And then this wig was not worn by Sia, but worn by the child dancer that would appear in the music video. Of course, Sia famous for never actually showing her face in videos. Here's Patterson Hood's guitar from Drive By Truckers. And honestly, Drive By Truckers, probably, probably my favorite band of all time. Here we have the Tom Petty wall different instruments and outfits worn by Mr. Tom Petty. And you can stand him up at the gates of hell and still he will not back down. And we are here in Cleveland, Ohio, so they do have a section here dedicated to the fact that Cleveland rocks. Different artifacts from different bands here connected with Cleveland. Megaphone right there. But look at that up there. That's the Devo outfit and the creepy Devo mask. The music of the Midwest. There's Meg White's jacket from the cover of the White Stripes. Icky Thumb. Very cool. Another one of my favorite bands, the White Stripes. Oh, and there's Jeff Tweedy of Wilco's guitar. I love Wilco. I Almost forgot about Wilco, but now I remember that I love Wilco. All right, heading back upstairs here to get on the escalator, head upward. Let's see if we can get one more look at this hot dog. Again, what sort of vehicle is this? Okay, it looks like it has little compartments or seat belts in the middle. Is this some sort of canoe, maybe? Some sort of rocket powered hot dog canoe? This exhibit in here is called the garage. Very interesting, let's see what this is. So apparently you can just pick up an instrument in here and just start, just start rocking. So I guess you can actually learn how to play the instruments here, learn how to play bass. Why not? I'm already here, why not learn how to play bass? the guitar station. Maybe it could rock out on a guitar just a little bit, maybe. Yes. Gotta plug the guitar in. For some reason, there's that plug in right there. Uh, oh, there we go. I found it. good for having no skill training no concept of what I'm even doing karaoke band and these people here in the masks are singing along so apparently you have to wear a mask to sing because they don't want the microphone getting infected yeah that's pretty amazing it's 
station here says you formed a band. Now what? Uh, brand your band. Select a style. Of, I guess this is a style sticker here. I don't know what looks like a good carpetbagger logo here. Oh, here we go. Here is my sticker here from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It looks like it is maybe a tradition to stick them on the wall here. So maybe I will add my sticker here to the wall. All right, so between these two drinking fountains here under the vent, I'm gonna place my sticker. So if you wanna come and say hello to my sticker, it'll be right here. Shows in this case some of the items used by bands. This is a homemade microphone stabilized in a cinder block with a telephone on top. It's like some sort of homemade guitar-like item there. Here is the new inductee section. This is the class of 2021. I guess they do not have uh, 2022 up yet. Here we have LL Cool J. You see the big 80s boom box there. Big crazy fluffy fur coat with a fluffy hat. Here we have Carol King and the Go-Go's there. There's Gil Scott Heron and uh, Randy Rhodes. I believe he was Ozzy Osbourne's guitar player. There's the Foo Fighters. You can see the drum set there as well as the guitars. And there we have some props from uh, a Foo Fighters music video. I forget which music video it is where they have the fake product. You see the Fubrite toothpaste and the Futos mints. Like I guess they, they take off of Mentos. And then we have Billy Preston. We got Todd Rundgren, one of my dad's favorite musicians with his crazy rooster outfit there. And then Charlie Patton and Tina Turner. And here is the Hall of Fame. Starts in 1986, inducted Chuck Berry, James Brown, Ray Charles, as well as a whole slew of other musicians. As we head down, new classes every year, different musicians. That takes us all the way up to 2021. I guess still awaiting the 2022 winners. I know that Dolly Parton was nominated and then backed out because she did not consider herself to be rock and roll. There's a lounge here. There's a lounge here themed after The Wall by Pink Floyd. See the giant blue monstrosity coming out there. And then this guy with long legs. It's been a while since I've seen this. As we enter The Wall Lounge here at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh see the legs of the big guy there as well as these uh, fascist looking hammer posters hey teacher no food and drinks beyond this point although from the wall here you do get a beautiful view of Lake Erie and through this escalator we exit through the gift shop you can buy t-shirts here for many of the great bands featured here at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame cutting board there. And to go along with that, you can get Snoop Dogg's cookbook from crook to cook. Here we have a little Devo baby. It's the Funko Pop section. You have the entire band of Pearl Jam there. You have T-Boz from TLC. I had such a crush on her when I was a teenager. And then look at this. Oh, I love the white stripes. The white stripes. Uh, Funko's there. I think that's this is from the cover of Elephant. It's got the cricket bat there in his country western suit. And all sorts of coffee cups related to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame here. So thank you for joining me here at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame here in Cleveland, Ohio. Finally learned why the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame here is here in Cleveland, Ohio because the word rock and roll was invented here in Cleveland, Ohio. You do indeed learn something every day if you open your ears and your eyes and are willing to learn. I appreciate you guys coming with me uh, today. 
If you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country filming roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, other fun random stuff. If you'd like to support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling a brand new carpet bagger possum enamel pin in the Etsy shop. Go check that out. That is in the description of this video. And all that helps keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.